dense vegetation, the horrors of biting insects and venomous snakes make the jungle the ideal place to build a prison. A hundred years ago, in this part of the Costa Rican rainforest, the authorities built a penal colony, capitalizing on the inmates' fear and loathing for the jungle. Every time I come to the rainforest, there's a fantastic sense of anticipation because the forest is the most wonderful place to be. When I get in there, I really feel alive. About 18 kilometers southwest of here, we've got a base camp. That's what I'm heading for. But in this terrain, travel isn't going to be easy. I reckon it's going to take the best part of two days to get there. I'm due to meet an expert in jungle medicine at our base camp. I'm carrying all I need for the trek, but I'll also show you how it's possible to survive here with nothing more than a machete. The diversity of life here never ceases to amaze me. This palm is quite incredible. It has the ability to move its center of gravity towards the light. That's why the locals call it the walking palm. And just down here, there's kapok. That can be really handy for lighting your fire. See this downy material from the seed case? If you collect some of that together and strike sparks onto it, hey presto, flames. I've come to the extreme southwest tip of Costa Rica in Central America, to a region called the Osa Peninsula, an area I've never explored before. This bit of jungle has been described as the most biologically diverse place on Earth, with at least 30 million different species of insects. I know the name of every type of tree in Britain, but I give up here. There are just too many to count. The only problem with navigating in rainforests is the trees. You can't see out. Have a look at the map and I'll show you what I mean. In this area here, there's over 100 square kilometers with nothing but trees, hills, and the odd river. So how do I know where I am? Well, the way I do it is to maintain a thread back to where I started. And that thread is made by measuring the angles of the trails using my compass and measuring distance by counting my paces using this handy counting device. That means I know exactly where I am on the map. There are very few trails in the jungle and certainly none where I'm going. And if you get lost, Chances are you'll never find your way out. I reckon I've come about four and a half kilometers. That means that at this sort of pace, I should be in base camp by sometime in the early afternoon tomorrow. Jungle hiking is hot, sticky work. And it's hardly surprising. Today the temperature's in the upper 80s and there's 90% humidity. So of course, I'm sweating buckets. And when you sweat buckets, you've got to drink buckets. One of the old jungle tricks is to get water out of vines like this one. <sighs> Lovely. Not all vines can be used like this. What you have to check for is that the 
liquid that comes out of it is clear, not milky, not yellow, not red, but clear. It doesn't sting your hand, and when you taste it, it doesn't burn your mouth. If it meets all those criteria, it's safe to drink. Heat exhaustion can be a killer in the jungle. It's so hot and steamy that your sweat doesn't evaporate, so your body temperature can go haywire. That's why I take every opportunity to cool down. If your body temperature goes much above 40 degrees, you can suffer delirium and convulsions, fall into a coma and even die. In jungle survival, food isn't a big priority. As long as you've got water, you can live three weeks without food, though I'll eat anything I can get my hands on. This is the heart of palm. You keep peeling it down through the woody layers to the tender core, which is absolutely delicious. When you eat your way back, when you find a woody bit, you peel it down again and eat the soft inner parts. Lovely. Well, that's been a windy old path. And I'm quite happy. I think I've come about nine kilometers, which means it'll be an easy journey to get to camp tomorrow. But now, being about 4 p.m., it's time to set up camp before it gets dark because in the jungle, the sun seems to go straight out. It's like God turns off the lights. When I'm hiking in the jungle, I always use a simple system, a lightweight tarpaulin to keep the rain off and a hammock to get me off the ground away from snakes and wild animals. The most important piece of equipment is a mosquito net. I've had malaria twice, a truly miserable experience best avoided. I always use insect repellents with high concentrations of DEET as well as taking anti-malarial drugs. Oh, it's great. Lovely to take the weight off your feet at the end of a good day's hike. And unfortunately, I can't put my feet up just yet. I've got firewood to collect and dinner to put on. I can tell you something, I'm hungry. Wood in the rainforest is often wet, so finding dry tinder can be very difficult indeed. So what I do is I always carry a little bag like this with me in the rainforest. And in here, I've got a lighter and some little bits of rubber tire cut into thin strips. Doesn't matter if that gets wet, and that'll burn really well to start my fire off. That amazing sound is a howler monkey. It's experiences like these that keep drawing me back to the rainforest. But of course, to the uninitiated, a sound like that, coupled with the gloom and darkness of the forest, can make the whole place seem intimidating. 